I just want to you know encourage you guys to get out your Bible, get your notes. We're gonna we're gonna get ready to dive in, you know, dive into what the Lord has for us. And I believe God has given me a message for us. Uh, it's I think it's kind of basic, but you know, for those of us that don't really know the ministry of the Holy Spirit, I think it's um, you know talking with some of you guys, going to small group last week, and seeing where people were at. It was it was eye opening for me, and um, sometimes I think. You know, I take for granted that we know this stuff, but, uh, um, you know, we don't always know it. And even if we did know it, it's good to kind of polish up and, you know, know what the Holy Spirit. And, you know, sometimes we kind of feel like, oh, he's some mystical force. Well, the Bible doesn't say that he's a mystical force. The Bible says that he's he brings power and that he is a third um, person in the Trinity, in the Godhead. Uh, he's the third person. So, yeah, our theme verse is Acts 1.8. But you receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, and um, Samaria, and, and to the ends of the earth. And uh, we really need the power of the Holy Spirit. Would you agree? Um, with everything going on, uh, you know, not to be fearful, but you know, to be cautious. Right, the things that's going on in even uh, all the cities with all with all the protests and the injustice that's going on, we do need the power of the Holy Spirit. The church needs to rise up, you know, to meet to meet people where they're at, right? Not only to just, um, uh, I guess, hide ourselves or whatnot, but to pray. Like this is a spiritual battle, like my wife was saying. It's a spiritual thing. And to stand in the gap and to pray for people, to let our friends know that we're praying for them. You know, um, I know that we can text our friends. You know, if, if you know that they're in this fight or they're really affected by this, we can send them a text, hey, you know, we love you, praying for you, or what, whatever it is, I think that we can um, make a difference in that. Uh, you know, we may not go out on the streets or do all kinds of crazy stuff, but we can do what we can do. And that's, I think that's what the Holy Spirit would ask us. You know, today's message is called, is called um, God Friended Me. And um, anybody watch the TV show about God Friended Me? Uh, the show is about, if you, if you haven't watched the show, it's about this guy, Miles Finer. Um, he's an outspoken atheist who does a podcast. I think we have a slide for that. Um, he does a podcast. His life is turned upside down when he receives a friend request on social media from God. And unwittingly, he becomes an agent, agent of change in the lives and destinies of others around him. Brought together by a mysterious account, um, <clears throat> Kara Bloom, an online journalist, and Miles find themselves investigating or inadvertently helping others in need. Miles and his friends are set on getting to the bottom of what he believes is an elaborate hoax. But in the, in the meantime, he plays along. In the process, it changes his life forever. So he's doing this. And he, <laughs> I didn't know God had a social media account. Um, but I guess he could because he's God. So he could have whatever he wanted, right? Um, I feel like if I use my imagination and I set my Hollywood filter to it, um, it does sort of feel a little like the Holy Spirit, how the Holy Spirit might do stuff. Um, would you agree? Like, um, is it, you might be having, you might be, um, have questions in your mind. Like, is this scriptural, right? Is this scriptural? Would God actually do this? I don't know. Would God actually do this? I think that's a good, uh, that's a good question to ask. Um, wouldn't it be nice to get instructions from God via, via video or via digital text? It would be nice, right? If we get an email from God or if you get social media, God drops you a, a note or if you get a text message from God, wouldn't it be nice? Hmm. How about a, how about a text? How about a written text? <laughs> you guys know where I'm going with this, right? Because God has given us a written text. It's called His Word. It's called the Bible. So with that, why don't we pray? Father, we come to you. Lord, we pray that you'd open our hearts and our understanding to your Word, God, your written text. Your instructions to us, Lord. Your, um, you reveal yourself, Lord. May you reveal yourself in our midst, God, in these times, Lord, because we need you. Holy Spirit, we need you. We welcome you right now to come and fill us, God, overflowing. Help me with my, um, like with my speaking and stuff like that. But help me to do what glorifies you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, I was like, what is that sound? <laughs> okay. So, uh, <laughs> sorry okay um so if you guys kind of hear on that side but my dog the one that was in here last week she's like oh so i hear a song like <laughs> she's like 
going to town on her toy. So anyway, uh, <laughs> so, okay, let's just jump right in. So the first slide I want to point out, like, what is the ministry of the Holy Spirit, right? We talked about God friending us and God giving us instruction, you know, on this show, God friending, God friending Miles and Kara, God would give them a friend request or, you know, digitally. Um, what, what does it look like for us that God has given us his word? And I believe that the first thing, what is the ministry of the Holy Spirit? Well, Jesus said this about the ministry of the Holy Spirit. If you want to turn to John 14, 16, um, John 14, 16, I know that's going to be on the slide as well, but you can turn there in your Bibles, John 14, 16. Um, it says this, and, he, and I, that is Jesus, he says, I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate. That word, another advocate, we talked about that last week, was alos parakletos one of the same kind, right? So he's going to give another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads you into all truth. The world cannot receive him because it's not looking for him and it doesn't recognize him because, excuse me, it doesn't recognize him, but you know him because he lives within you. Now and later will be in you. He lives in you now and later will be in you. So Jesus is telling them that, you know, the Holy Spirit is around, but there's going to come a time where he's going to live inside of you. And it's interesting that the verbiage that Jesus uses, he says, the Father will give you another advocate. He's going to give you the alos parakletos, the one in the same kind. But the, but the word advocate in those times, the Romans were ruling the Jews. So Jesus is using the verbiage of the day that they would understand the Jews were not well versed in the Roman law. So they would need an advocate, just like how we live in, in our times, right? Sometimes we're not so keen on everything that's going on or we need help. Um, wouldn't it be good to have a, a lawyer friend that you could say, hey, you know what, I, I don't understand. I'm reading, I'm trying to read this. And they'll be like, oh yeah, you know, the fine print says this. Well, this is what Jesus is talking about. He's saying that the Father is going to send an advocate. So the people right away, they understood that Jesus is, or God is going to send an advocate. He's going to send like um. I think on the bottom of there, I have advocate, a person who le who pleads on someone's behalf. He's a supporter. He's also a lawyer, right? When you say advocate, that kind of gives us, um, I guess, the thought of okay, legal, like legal um, terms, right? So he's a he's a lawyer, and he says he'll never leave you. Jesus is getting ready to leave them, but he's saying that the Father is going to send the advocate, one in the same kind that will never leave you, the Holy Spirit, right? He's saying that, you know, he's getting raised. He says, guys, I'm going to leave, but the Father will send someone who will never leave. He'll never leave, and he's going to send, and he's going to lead us into all truth. Well, let's keep on, keep on going. What is the ministry of the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit, his, another ministry is found in John 14, 26, and it says this, but when the Father sends the advocate, there it is again, right? The one of the same kind, the parakletos, when the Father sends the advocate as my representative, that is, the Holy Spirit, he will teach you everything and he'll remind you of everything I have told you. All right, teachers, um, you guys know that you teach because you want your students to know. And you students, you should, if the teacher assigns some reading, Right, like you guys would be well doing doing the reading assignment or whatever. Why? Because it's going to be important. It's going to be important that you know what the teacher's talking about. Or come test time, right? You study your notes. And um, I don't know if you ever prayed. I, I've been in um, in circles like in school, and you know, students. I hear students praying like, "Oh, God help me." Uh, you know, I didn't study. God help me. I didn't read the chapters I was supposed to read. <laughs> I mean, God can do anything. But in, in this, we see that the Father, He's going to send an advocate. He'll teach you everything, and He'll remind you of everything that I have told you. So the Holy Spirit is going to bring, bring back to remembrance. And sometimes, you know, even when I'm, when I'm speaking on messages, people come up to me and they tell me, man, you know, like this is years later, or even right now, like people say, um, just I recall uh, people saying, wow, you know when you said this, blah, 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 when you're talking about that, I'm like, I never said that. I I don't even re remember saying anything like that. And people are like, yeah, you know, you said this. I'm like, no, it's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was ministering through his word. His word was coming alive to us. That's what Jesus is saying. He's going to teach you everything and he'll remind you of everything that I've said. Maybe I might have said something and then maybe you might be daydreaming about something else. And the Holy Spirit kind of just comes and he just kind of ministers to you. Well, that's what he does. 
right? He takes his word, he takes his instruction, he takes um, what he's given to us and he helps us understand. He brings us closer to him and his understanding. I know um, there's a friend of mine, his dad visited our church when I used to be at, um, at Hope Chapel and he visited our church and just so happened I was speaking that Sunday and um, I even forget what I spoke about. I have no idea. But till this day, this was probably like five, six years ago. His dad remembers, like, man, your friend Dave, you know, he, he said this, blah, blah, blah. And he, I mean, just a couple weeks ago, he was telling me that, that his father brought that up. And I was like, <laughs> I don't even remember. But that, I feel like that's a great example of the Holy Spirit bringing back to remembrance to help us live our lives. So this brings to my next slide. Why is it important? Why is it important to, to hear, to read, to study, to memorize, and to meditate on the Word of God? Uh, the navigators actually, they have a, a little diagram, and it's going to come up on the screen, and it's a hand. And in the hand, it, it talks about um, the number one, I don't know if you guys can see that, but um, getting a good, it's called getting a good grip on God's Word. And I like it because it starts out with a pinky, and pretty much that's like the weakest finger, and um it, it goes hand in hand is, um, you know, the pinky, right, and the, and the thumb. But um, we want to hear the word of God, right, and meditate. Hear and meditate, right? So you can grab something like, um, you know, I, I can, let me grab something. So I'll just use the word of God, right? We can hear and meditate. So you can grab the word, we can grasp the word of God. And then it's um, we can hear and read the word of God. So if you just use those thing, those two things, right? I'm not. Um, so it's it's a firmer grip, right? Then we can um, not only that, but we can study and meditate, right? And that's even a stronger grip. Uh, then we can mer memorize, memorize, and that's probably the strongest grip that we can have. Now, if you apply all five, right? Getting a good grasp on God's word, like it's it's. I mean, it's a good grip. And I like someone put in the illustration this said and apply. Like I just put that in. I thought, oh, that's cool. You know, we can apply. But getting a good grip on God's word, right? It's good to hear, to read, to study, to memorize, and to meditate on God's word. And what's going to happen is the Holy Spirit, Jesus says, He's going to teach us when we're reading and we're asking, like, Jesus, you know, what is what are you what are you saying in this? And I remember just last week, you know, I feel like the Holy Spirit gave me a revelation of stuff that I, I questions that I had for years. I was reading and I was studying God's word, and I felt like I got a revelation. Well, it wouldn't happen without the Holy Spirit. It wouldn't happen without me being in the Word of God. You know, so we need this. We need to hear, we need to read, we need to study, we need to uh, memorize and meditate on God's word, and He's going to bring it back to remembrance um, what we've what He's shown us. Well, let's move on. In John sixteen eight, it says this: that when He, right, the Holy Spirit, the Advocate comes, He will convict the world of sin, and we we see that we see that the Lord is convicting the world of sin. You know, you and I, we probably get convicted of the sinful things that we've done. I know that I've got convicted of what I was doing before. And even um, if I'm going to do something or if I'm going to say something or if I'm thinking something, the Holy Spirit will convict me. He'll convict me. And I welcome that. I want that. Um, he says he's going to, the when the Holy Spirit comes or the advocate um, comes, he will convict the world of its sin and of God's righteousness and the coming judgment. And I just want to point out, you know, sometimes we can feel like we can mix up these two things, conviction and condemnation. And I want to say this, that the Holy Spirit brings conviction. The enemy brings condemnation. So what do the voices sound like? You know, when you, in, your, in your mind, when you're doing something or if something happens and you feel a conviction, like maybe you're going to, um, I don't know, you're going to lie or you're going to do something dishonest. And then you, you hear like the Holy Spirit saying, shouldn't do that, right? Or maybe you're driving down the H3 and then you hear this voice um, uh, saying, you better slow down, right? Or whatever it is, and you slow down. And, um, you know, there's, there's someone that is monitoring the speed limit. Or maybe you're at the shopping center and, you know, someone does something to you. And then the Holy Spirit is like, just let them go. Pray for them, right? And then you, you do that. That's like, you know, the conviction of the Holy Spirit to walk in Him. But say you did something wrong, and this was, and the voice in you is like, "Oh, you so dumb! You shouldn't have did that. Oh, that was a big mistake. Oh, you so you know you you worthless. You shouldn't have. What kind of Christian are you? Do you recognize the differences in that voices? The voices one is of conviction, one is of condemnation. And maybe as twenty years ago that that voice comes in and says, "You know when you did that, or when you said this to that person, 
that's condemnation. That's not the voice of the Holy Spirit. If it's something that, um, you know, is brought up like that and you've dealt with it, it's a different thing if you haven't dealt with it. Maybe you're harboring unforgiveness or you're harboring bitterness and the Holy Spirit is trying to bring it into the, the, the picture so you can deal with it. Maybe someone has done something to you and it just it brings flashbacks of what used to do, what you used to do. Well, I used to do this. I used to take action. And maybe the Holy Spirit is wanting to deal with something like that. And it's different if he's wanting to deal versus maybe you've done and it's a condemning voice. It's a a voice of saying, well, you, what kind of Christian are you? Are you even saved? <laughs> you know, if you have these kind of thoughts, I just want to let you know, I have these thoughts too. I'm like, yes, I am saved. You know, I might not feel so holy at that moment, but maybe at that moment is when I need to just say, Lord, I'm so sorry. Um, please forgive me. You know, I believe that your word cleanses me. I believe that your spirit is living in me. You know, and, I, I, and I'll, I'll pray at that moment. Because sometimes our emotions can kind of be tricky, a little tricky. And we need to stand on faith. We need to stand on what God's word says, right? Because God did friend us and he did give us instruction and he did give us his promises. So we can stand on God's promises. Amen. Um, all right. The two voices. Let's move on. Uh, the spirit of God, or he, he guides us. So in John 16, 13, Jesus is saying the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Remember now, this is all fresh, right? This is all fresh to us that the ministry of the Holy Spirit is, is different. And um, he's going to bring in, in what he wants to do. So Jesus' way of operating is different from what the Holy Spirit is, is Holy Spirit's operation. So let's read it. In John 16, 13, it says this, When the Spirit of truth comes, He will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on His own, but He will tell you what He has heard. He will tell you about the future. So we see that the Holy Spirit, He's going to guide us into all truth concerning Christ. He's going to guide us into all truth. He's going to help us discern what is right or what is wrong. Right? He's going to guide us into truth. And he's going to, that's what happens, right? When we're not sure like which way to go, he's going he's gonna to help us. Um, what if I choose the wrong thing? What's going to happen? Well, he's going to bring us back. That's because he loves us and he's, a, he's there to, to help us, right? He's there to guide us. He's there to lead us into all truth. So he'll help us discern right and wrong. He's going to inform us, right? He says he's not going to speak on his own, but he will tell you what he's heard. So he's going to speak and inform us on the heart of the Father. So it's kind of like that move, that show, right? God friended me. Um, in the social media, God was giving Miles and Kara these, um, these uh, directional, I guess, instructions so that they could go and, you know, help people and, and, and you know, basically change the trajectory of their lives. So that's what the Holy Spirit is going to do. He's going to help us to know what's on the heart of the Father. Right? If we want to know, now again, the Holy Spirit, is a, He's a gentleman. He's not going to force it. If we reject it, the Holy Spirit is not going to force us to do that. Sometimes we, we get the idea like, oh, no, you know, once we, once we get baptized by the Holy Spirit or once we say yes to God, ah, oh, God's got us and He's going to force us because, you know, you made this commitment. That's not how it works. God is going to allow us, right? He's not going to rip our, our choice of freedom of of decision making or our free will he's not going to rip that from us once we surrender to him it's a continued surrender so he's going to tell us um, and he's going to tell you about the future is he's going to foretell or he's going to declare it not only that he's going to foretell and we see that we see that before it happens the holy spirit a lot of times lets us know right when we pray about certain things um, there's people that move in the gift of prophecy Right, even um, Jesus is telling them. He says, "This is what's going to happen. I'm going to go away, but I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. I'm going to send the Advocate. I'm going to send the Comforter. I'm going to send the third person in in the in the Trinity, the Godhead, and He's going to come and He's going to lead you." Right, the Holy Spirit told Paul that Paul, you're going to suffer all these things, but you're going to go to uh, Rome and you're going to testify. Um, the Holy Spirit told Paul beforehand, you, "You're going to be bound up." Right, he used that prophet Agabus, and and the prophet says, you know, he took Paul's belt and he wrapped it around his ar his arms, and he says, you're going to be bound up and you're going to be delivered, 
right? So he was, the Holy Spirit was using that, that man to prophesy to Paul. The Holy Spirit also told Peter that you're going to suffer. He told all of them that, you know, you're going to live this kind of life. He was telling them beforehand, right? The Holy Spirit was ministering to them and foretelling what was going to happen. So you see, that's the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Um, I remember, like, we, we were working with a couple and, um, you know, their worst fears and we, we were sitting down with them and they're like, you know, our, they're, they're going to get married and their families were kind of like um, not, not uh, it wasn't, they were kind of at, 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 at odds a little. <clears throat> and I remember and they were, they were telling us stuff and I was like, man, this is, the Holy Spirit is ready to bring breakthrough. And like I was, we were hearing this and I was, turning, and I was just trying to encourage them. I said, you know, um, this is what's going to happen. You know, as we act in humility, as we come before the Lord, as we surrender this, as you take steps in faith, the Holy Spirit is going to use that. And what, and I could see the Holy Spirit gave me um, revelation that breakthrough was coming. So I told them, I was trying to encourage them. And I was like, you know, was I being too forward? I, I in, in myself, I felt like I was kind of being, um, I could have came across insensitive. And I might do that at times. So if I do that, please forgive me. I just want to ask forgiveness beforehand. Um, but the Holy Spirit was prompting me to say, to prophetically tell them this. And it's not me. I just want to tell you that. I, it's not me. I'm not, you know, I'm not a prophet or anything like that. But I felt like the Holy Spirit so strongly and I was, I was laughing and it, it, it looked almost insensitive. In my mind, like I was looking at myself like, whoa, bro, you're kind of being insensitive. You're laughing and you're telling them this. But guess what happened? right the holy spirit we got to witness we got to witness what happened and we just seen not only the the joining of of two individuals but we got to see the joining of two families and how the holy spirit just broke through these barriers because of they wanted what god wanted and they came in humility and we see we saw the two families we got to hear the the two sides saying um you know they didn't say specifics and stuff like that but we got to see just the joining of two families and it was so beautiful it i felt like wow we were praising the lord it was just such an awesome thing but that's what the holy spirit does i felt that you know he gave revelation that what he was about to do and i could encourage them i could speak that to them and i could call it out oh what else, what else um examples that the holy spirit so sometimes when I say the Holy Spirit, where would you say, um, if, I, if I was saying the Holy Spirit, um, where does the Holy Spirit, uh, where, where would we find scriptural stuff on the Holy Spirit? Where would you say? You would, I mean, we just went through it, the New Testament. Some of us would think Acts, right? Acts, and, and this, is, this is an occasion. But we're going to continue on. Um, Continue on in the ministry of the Holy Spirit in Acts four, Acts four eight through fourteen. You can get your Bibles. I don't have that um, in. I don't have that in the notes or on the PowerPoint. But Acts four eight through fourteen, we see Peter or Acts four eight. We see Peter. He's preaching, and the Bible says that five thousand men. So that's just the men came to Christ. So five thousand. So if you multiply that by you know let's say two kids and a wife. You know, maybe 20,000 people coming to Christ. So Peter is filled in Acts 4, 8. We pick it up. He says, Peter is filled with the Holy Spirit. And he said to the rulers, oh, so let me set up. So Peter is preaching. And the rulers are like, Peter, you got to stop preaching. You know, don't do this. And they try to, um, they had him arrested and brought in, you know, for before them, before the council. And they're saying, you got to stop doing this. Oh, what happened was, too, that Peter was going to the temple Um I think Peter and John, and there was this blind man and he was begging. And Peter says, you know, silver and gold, I don't, you know, I don't have to give to you. But what I have, I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. So this man that was crippled, I think he was like 40 something years old, the Bible says. Um, this man that was crippled for his whole life, Peter reached out and he pulled the man up. And the man started walking. The Bible says that he started walking, leaping and praising God. And this caused a stir. So P um, Peter preached. And so we see that this, this crowd, you know, is, is gathering around him. This is the same Peter that denied Christ. So we see now that he's running and he's trying to, instead of running and hiding, denying Christ, he's now the, the spokesperson for the church. And so he's preaching and people are coming to Christ. And this is where we pick it up in, in Acts 4, 8 to 14. <clears throat> it says this, Peter filled. 
excuse me. Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and people of the elders, let it be known to all of you and to all of the people of Israel that the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who you crucified, right? Who you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man is standing before you well. And in verse 11, he says this, Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you. The builders, which has become the cornerstone, right? They're building their religion and they rejected Jesus, who was the cornerstone. Now, the cornerstone is the first stone that they set, the, fir the first stone that they set to build everything around. So this stone is the main stone that when they're building a building project or whatever, it's the plum. They shoot the plum off of this stone. Everything goes off of this stone. So he's saying that cornerstone that you rejected, the main guy that you rejected, He's, um, uh, he rejected, the bill is rejected. It says, and there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which men must be saved. Peter is saying this. And in verse 13, it says, now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, they, per they perceived that they were uneducated, common men. They were astonished. And they recognize that they had been with Jesus. So that's what Jesus does, right? That's what the Holy Spirit, the ministry of the Holy Spirit. He takes common, um, uneducated people, right? And he pours them in. He takes broken people. He takes people um, that, you know, like Moses. Moses couldn't speak well. I feel like God uses the weak and the foolish things. That's what the Bible says. He uses the weak and the foolish to confound the wise and the strong. God can use anyone. Right, so he says this, um, the and the 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 teachers of the law they recognize that they had that these men Peter and John had been with Jesus, but seeing the man who was healed standing beside them, they had nothing to say in opposition. So this man, they everybody knew this guy that was crippled. And now he's walking. Maybe his legs were even like all bust up. You know what I'm saying? He's all bust up and he was there. He's always, and maybe they, they probably even knew the family. And they knew that this guy was no, um, no hoax. He was no fraud. He was standing there. But now, brother, he's like standing right next to them guys. And he's like, <laughs> you know, there's proof and they're speechless, right? So basically they said, stop doing this kind of stuff. And they, um, they let him go. And, and Peter Peter and John, they kept on preaching. But that's the power of the Holy Spirit. The ministry of the Holy Spirit was so strong in the early church. And I want to give another example. In Acts 6, 8 through 10. Um, so Stephen, he's uh, one of the elders you know, that, was, that, that was appointed by the apostles to minister to the people, minister to the church. And um, the Bible describes him a man full of God's grace and power. He was performing amazing miracles through the power of the Holy Spirit, right? And signs among the people. But one day, some men from the synagogue of freed slaves, and I thought, wow, they should be happy about this. But these guys, and I don't know what it was, but these men from the synagogue of freed slaves, as it was called, started to debate with, with um, Stephen. And it says they were Jews from Cyrene, Alexandria, Cic uh, Cilicia, and the province of Asia. None of them could stand against the wisdom and the spirit which Stephen spoke about. So Stephen was full with the Holy Spirit, and he's debating these guys. I don't know if it's probably but Judaism or maybe the scriptures, but Stephen has his download by the Holy Spirit, and they cannot withstand him. So they get all angry, and you know, when, when you cannot win in that, in that arena, they took it, and it got violent and ended up in the streets. So I want to skip down to... Um, Acts 7, 55 to 60, it says, full of the Holy Spirit. Um, so Stephen was full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God. So this is the one, right? When the Holy Spirit come, he's going to give us um, what's on the heart of God. He's going to tell us what God is saying. So we see that he's foretelling or he's foretelling. It says that he's full of the Holy Spirit. He gazed into heaven and the glory of God. Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Prior to this, Jesus was sitting at the right hand of God. When Jesus ascended up to heaven, when the disciples saw him going up into heaven, the Bible says that he went and he ascended and he sat at the right hand of God. Now we see Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And I've heard other preachers and I and 
other preachers say that he's standing because Stephen is about to be the first martyr, right? That's what Jesus said back in Acts 1.8. You receive power after when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you'll be my martyrs, you'll be my witness, right, to Jerusalem, to Judea, to Samaria, to the ends of the earth. So this is what Jesus is talking about, not only the power to live and to die to self, but also the power to be his martyrs, his martyr, the first martyr. And this we see Jesus. He says, I see Jesus standing at the right hand. Can you make sure dog doesn't come? In? Yeah. We see Jesus standing at the right hand of the Father. And I've like I heard, like I said, I heard other preachers say that it's because the first martyr is about to give his life for the gospel. So Jesus is standing at the right hand. Sorry. <laughs> Get a little emotional when I think about that, you know. Uh, Jesus is standing at the right hand of the Father. And it's almost like this is happening. So he stands up and he it's like it's like you know, at an event when something exciting is happening and you want to see everything that's going on. So you stand up. So you see Jesus standing at the right hand of the Father. And he said, and this is what Stephen says. He says, Behold, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. God gives him a vision. And he says, Stephen is just saying to them, he, he's forth telling them. He's saying, I'm seeing this. He's giving them revelation. These people that are about to, to do him harm. But it says this in verse 57. He says, but they cried out with a loud voice. They stopped their ears, right? And they rushed together at him. So they didn't want to hear what the vision that, that Stephen was, was seeing. He's seeing the heavens open up. They're like, you know, we want to hear that Ah, and they start yelling and they rush him. They stopped his ears. They stopped the ears. They rushed him. Um, they rushed at him and they cast him out of the city and they started stoning him. And the witnesses laid down, it says, those that were doing this laid their garments at the feet of a young man named Saul. So we're introduced to Saul, who would be the apostle Paul. His name would be changed. So this is where we were introduced to this man. They lay, they, they laid his their garments at a young at the feet of a young man named Saul, and they were as they were stoning Stephen. Stephen cries out and he says, "Lord Jesus, receive my spirit." And falling to his knees, I don't know if that's what I would be praying. <laughs> I honestly, like, I mean, that had to be the power of the Holy Spirit, right? I mean, I don't know if I'd be praying for them or if I'd be, I'd probably be trying to scrap and I'd be picking up stones and like trying to fly them back, right? But that that's not my story right now. The story is about Stephen. I don't know, like maybe I'd grab something else, right? And we see that we would want to, we would want to, we would want to exact vengeance or we want to take control of the situation. But we see that when Stephen is filled with the Holy Spirit, and I don't know, I'm not trying to discount, you know, being fighting for justice and stuff like that. But we see that in this case, Stephen, he cries out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit, falling to his knees. He cries out with a loud voice, and he says, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. That's the power of the Holy Spirit, to pray for your enemies, to pray for those that are doing you injustice, to pray for those that are about to kill you. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. Right, we need the power of the Holy Spirit. Stephen, he's he's about he's 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 being victimized, and he's saying, "Lord, don't hold this sin." He's not praying, "Lord, I pray that you get every one of them, especially especially those that started it." You know, get the guy who threw the first stone. May he die. You know, break his. You know. Break him, God. Um, I pray that you'd give him exactly what he deserves. I pray that you would, you know, get his family. He's not even praying that. He's praying to not hold the sin against them. Filled with the Holy Spirit, this is what Stephen is praying. So I ask, where in the Bible should we look to learn about the ministry of the Holy Spirit? You know, what would you say? Would you say it's in the book of Acts? Would you say it's in the New Testament? You know, if, if, you, if you think that, well, to learn about the Holy Spirit, it's in the book of Acts. We need to go to the book of Acts. We need to look in the, the New Testament. You're partially correct. 
because I want to continue. Let's dig into the ministry of the Holy Spirit. In Genesis, um, you can just write this down. I don't have this. I'm not going to have uh, slides on this. But in Genesis chapter 1, it says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And it says, And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. So we see the Holy Spirit in the beginning, right, hovering over the waters. It says that the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. So we see the Holy Spirit in creation. We see the Holy Spirit directing Moses, empowering Moses, right? Anointing Moses to do what God had called him. In Exodus 31, we see the Holy Spirit on Bezalel. Bezalel. It says this in Exodus 31, filled with the Spirit of God, with wisdom, understanding, and knowledge, and all kinds of skill. So basically, this guy, Bezalel, was a blue-collar worker, or he was a tradesman. The Bible says that he was filled with the Spirit of God, to, with, with wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. And, you know, we have friends like this, right? I have, I have friends like this that I'm like, I'm amazed that the wisdom that they have, the skill that they have, the understanding, the knowledge of how things work. I'm like, man, that's a gift. That's a gift. And, you know, it might be fostered naturally, but I, I believe that, you know, when we give it over to the Holy Spirit, that it would be exponential, right? It would be supernatural. It would be a supernatural wisdom. Like God will download. So we see this, that this guy, Bazalel, gives his, gives his skill to the Holy Spirit to build the tabernacle of God. We see in Numbers 24, Balaam, he prophesies a blessing instead of a cursing over Israel. And this is when we see Balaam, he's, he's a diviner or he's a, um, he's a spiritualist that he's a non-Israelite, but it says that the Spirit of God came on him and he was prophesying blessing, right? So can God use the atheist? I believe so. Can God use um, a non-Christian um, spiritualist? or diviner. I mean, we see it in Numbers chapter 24. You can read it for yourself. Balaam was in it for his own gain, but the Holy Spirit used it to bless the people of Israel. Moving along, we see the Holy Spirit's ministry over the judges. It says that the Spirit of the Lord came upon the judges. Um, you can read this in the book of Judges. You see that the Spirit of the Lord came upon the judges to help lead his people. So we see the ministry of the Holy Spirit leading, and the Holy Spirit would come upon to direct Right? He would empower them to direct. We, we see that the Holy Spirit um, came upon King Saul in Samuel, I think, 1 Samuel 15. And we also see that in 1 Samuel 16, it says that the Spirit of the Lord, the Holy Spirit, departed from Saul. You know, because Saul continued on in disobedience, he was disloyal to God. He was prideful. I think in, um, Saul, uh, in, in 1 Samuel 16, it talks about like how he was disobedient. And not only that, he erected a statue in his own image. Um, Saul did in his own image. So you see that Saul was pulling away from God. And it says that the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. So it's interesting. I believe that the Spirit of God will depart from individuals when we persist in disobedience, in disloyalty and pride. Various other prophets, um, you know, it talks about the Spirit of God coming on, coming on King David, right, when he was anointed by Samuel. Um, various other prophets who would speak for the Lord uh, were anointed or were empowered by the Holy Spirit. So we see that the ministry of the Holy Spirit is not just limited to the book of Acts or in the New Testament. He is, pre he is present throughout the history. Even when we don't see that you're moving, the Holy Spirit is moving. Even when we don't feel that the Holy Spirit is doing something, He's doing something, right? He never stops. He never stops working. Hmm, maybe I'll write a song. <laughs> uh, it's already a song. I'm just joking. I'm not going to do that. It's copyright infringement. Anyway, um, how much more effective um, would He work in our lives if we invited Him? Or better yet, if we ask to partner with what he's doing, all right, let's partner with what he's doing. So when I ask, when someone asks you, where in the Bible should we look to learn about the ministry of the Holy Spirit, what would you say to them? What would you say? Right? He's, he's throughout the Bible. I mean, he's throughout from Genesis. You, you, you heard it yourself. From Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, all the way through the New Testament to Revelation. The Holy Spirit's ministry is there. 
it's amazing um so how do we close this uh i just want to say again that how much more effective instead of asking the holy spirit to bless what we're doing to ask the holy spirit holy spirit what do you want to do what do you want to accomplish can we partner with you you know we want to partner with what the holy spirit is doing so i want to bring up this verse i know i talked about this last week but in luke 11 9 through 13 to through 13 um he says this jesus is saying this so i say to you ask and it will be given to you seek and you'll find knock and the door will be open to you for everyone who asks receives whoever seeks finds and the one who knocks the door will be opened how much more will your father in heaven give you the holy spirit to those who ask him when you ask i i just wrote three things that i thought about we need to ask in a, in a with a heart that is thirsty or hungry um, we need to ask in faith and we need to ask surrendered to what the holy spirit wants to do maybe you've asked and maybe you're in a church setting that you know you've seen other people um maybe manifest the holy spirit or maybe they spoke in tongues or maybe you saw different people and you're you're there and the holy spirit you felt that you didn't feel anything in you and you think man why didn't the holy spirit minister to me why didn't i feel this why didn't i exude this you know exterior manifestation or whatever um according to the scripture what jesus says he says how much more will the father in heaven give you the holy spirit to those who ask it's not that you know if you didn't get it that god sees you as any less or because you didn't speak in tongues or because you did speak in tongues that you're any better but that there's a timing that the holy spirit maybe the holy spirit wants us to press in maybe, maybe it's a matter of waiting on him maybe it's a matter of surrendering right i don't know what it is but can we have hearts can we come in faith ask in faith can we be have hearts that are thirsting the bible says jesus says you know if you're thirsty that come to me and i'll give you living waters you know that will spring forth from your innermost being you know we need to come hungry or thirsty to jesus and we need to come surrendering lord what you want to do in our lives so with that why don't we pray and um i have some small group questions and i guess you could put up the small group questions but I want to pray for us right now. And, um, you know, I hope this has enlightened you as far as ministry of the Holy Spirit. I know sometimes it can be somewhat uh, a mystery or whatnot, but we see the Holy Spirit, again, moving from the beginning of, of Genesis to Revelation. Holy Spirit, we come to you and we pray, God, that even the words that I spoke, Lord, I pray that you'd use that, um, that you would just bring to memory the things that you've shown us in the past. And I pray that you would help us, Holy Spirit, to discern the voices, whether it's voices of conviction, which is you, or voices of condemnation, which is not of you. Lord, I pray that you would help us to know you more. Holy Spirit, come and fill us. Fill us overflowing. We desire more of you. Lord, we surrender our lives to you. We ask that you would fill us. Lord, we wait expectantly for what you want to do. Lord, to make us holy, to give us power to live, um, not only to die for you, but to live um, dying to ourself, God, to not gratify the desires of our flesh, the sinful nature that is apart from you, God. Uh, we love you, and we, um, we lift you up in Jesus' name. Amen.